Okay, so welcome everybody. We are here for lesson eight, which is all about learning, uh, following, and testing the plan. And so today I will be presenting on my personal strategic action plan um, and going through the process of providing how to provide structured, positive, and constructive feedback in, re in relation to that plan to um, improve upon it over time. Because this is a working document that we will be using to guide our actions over, over time. <clears throat> okay, so the writing prompt for this week is the phrase, I have been wronged. And this one I felt was really an interesting one because many times in our lives, we find ourselves in positions where we are fused with this idea of um, something that somebody else has done to us and how it is negatively impacting our ability to live our lives to our fullest potential. And so when I completed this writing prompt, I really started to think about this situation that I've been in over the past four years and how I have been um, conceptualizing and thinking about and feeling about the things that have but been done to me, about me, around me, um, and the negative impact that that has had on me and my thoughts and my feelings and my uh, behavioral dispositions and my urges. And um, I've really come to this more clear understanding of my own negative patterns of blaming others and putting my, um, you know, putting my faults and my problems kind of in somebody else's hands and not taking full responsibility for my role and my um, ability and capability to make different decisions and choose different action patterns. And so I wrote about this, the, the fact that I have been wronged by someone who is very close to me. So, you know, the, the person, um, and I don't wanna get too, um, too personal into the story, of what has gone over in the past four, gone, gone on over the past four years, but at the very core of it, um, my husband and I were lied to and manipulated and you know deceited into you know dropping all of our all of the things that we had going for us in our lives, um, selling all of our worldly belongings, and choosing a different a different path in the service of what I thought was being a helpful and supportive and loving daughter. And the, the realization of that didn't come until, at, until after about you know, six months to a year, the realization of kind of the depth of the um, the depth of the problems that were kind of that we were being um, you know that were surrounded with in our lives um, and you know once once we realized what was what was really happening and um, that we needed to make a change in our lives, we made that change, but this the um, you know the events leading up to that major um, life and you know major traumatic life event was has been really difficult to wrap my mind around and think about you know what choices that i made what joy, what was driving my behavior and you know placing a lot of blame on the other person for you know causing the actions that i decided to take and so because of that it's really been weighing on me um and those the thoughts and the feelings and the memories that I have of you know things that were said and things that were done and um, you know, things that I saw really tends to cause me a lot of um, 
pain and suffering and um, you know, I just want to, uh, you know, push all of that away and wish, you know, wish that it was different. Um, but really what I've found that I've been doing is placing blame on this other person for the things that are going, that have gone wrong, um, over the past four years. And so, you know, not taking full responsibility. If this person hadn't have done this, this, and this, we wouldn't be in this situation. Um, and that may be true that, you know, this person's behaviors um, set the stage or set the occasion for my husband and I to make certain decisions. Had we known things, you know, had we known differently, had we asked different questions, we might have made different decisions. Um, but we're, you know, trusting people who believe that, you know, believe that people mean what they say and say what they mean, because that's how we live our lives. Um, and so I've spent a better part of the past four years, you know, really you know, placing blame on this other person for our challenges. But the reality is that we, or I have the responsibility, I have the ability to respond in a different way. I know I have a choice to engage in different action. And these thoughts and feelings and memories related to this challenging situation that we've been placed in over the past four years that we've found ourselves in, um, it was, you know, it's been terrible and it has caused us a lot of grief and we have second guessed and questioned our decision making and um, you know, I tried to identify where exactly it is that we went wrong, but um, if we continue to simply perseverate on what happened in the past and the, what we could have done differently and, you know, um, kind of get down in the weeds about all of the things that have happened but aren't currently happening now, then that creates a, creates a situation and it creates a context in which we are living in the past and we're, we're um, perseverating about things that, you know, could have been different, should have been different, would have been different had, you know, we, had, we made different choices. But the reality is, is that we made the choices that we made given the information that we had. And now that we have different information, it's our responsibility to choose different actions come in contact with our values, identify what they are, understand deeply what it is that drives us to, to be the people we are and do the things that we do and commit to action in the service of those values. This takes a deep and honest reflection about not what another person did, or didn't do, but an honest reflection of what the choices were that I made, the actions that I engaged in, the thoughts that I've had, the um, you know the things that I've done. Um, when you reflect honestly upon what has happened and accept it for what it is, and diffuse from the negativity that is, um, and you know those. Uh, entangled thought patterns when you learn how when we learn how to diffuse from those um, patterns of you know those uh, action patterns and commit to a different course in the service of our values using them as guideposts or compass points um, we have a higher probability of success in living a more um, a life that's filled with more peace, love, and joy. And when we're, when we're um, living a value-based life and we're, our life is filled with peace, love, and joy, we're much more likely to live a health, healthy, happy, and, and fulfilling life in the end. So even though I have been wrong, there's nothing, you know, there's no one that would say like, oh no, you, you know, there was nothing wrong with what happened in your life. Yes, it is true. I have, you know, I can accept that. I can live with it, I can, um, but I can now put that situation and put that, those events in their place, except that they are what they are, it happened, 
that person made the choices that they made. I made the choices that I made. And, you know, it didn't end up how we expected it to. Um, but now is the point where we're at this crossroads where we can choose to either remain um, fused and um, avoiding experiences and um, living an unfulfilling and stressed life, or we choose to accept what has accept what has happened, accept what our choices have been, and move forward in a more committed way. And that path, the path to the left, the tra the path less traveled, um, is the one that it's not going to be easier by any means. There will still be points and, and times that will be hard and, you know, will test our resolve. But in the very end, we will be moving towards and living in accordance with our values and moving towards a more fulfilling and, um, and um, life that is full of meaning and um, positive or positivity. <clears throat> okay, so today we are going to be looking at a personal strategic action plan um, that I have developed. And there are six sections um, that are included within this PSAP. The first one is an assessment of um, myself, or you know, and so that's the first section is to assess yourself and identify where those discrepancies are between your values and your current actions. The second section is a clarification of values and barriers, um, uh, barriers to living in accordance with those values. Um, the third section is the uh, development of long and short term goals in relation to those values. Um, and then the fourth section is, is action plans, so specific steps that can be taken um, in the near future that will um, keep you moving towards your, uh, your long and short term goals. A plan of execution of the plan, so kind of thinking about what is it going to take to actually do the things that you, that you say that you want to do or that you're committed to. Um, so this is kind of, you know, your commitment. Um, and then um, the last section is a plan for progress monitoring and self-reflection. And then we're going to talk about what um, two different types of feedback. And the, the first is um, what we'll call positive feedback. And so that is the, um, you know, the behavior specific reinforcement for the things that were done well, that were, um, that were um, good or positive or uh, about the plan. The second, bit, the second type of feedback is constructive or diagnostic feedback, which really is about how, you know, the things that are identified that could be improved. And so constructive or our diagnostic feedback is all about how we can make those slight modifications to a plan in order to improve it or clarify some things. Um, and then we'll talk about the actual, the importance of these things and so in why, why we go through this process, why it's important to plan, why it's important to get, give and receive feedback um, and how this all works as a, as a whole. So our learning objectives for today are to evaluate the strategic plans of others, provide diagnostic feedback, and then um, writing or reflecting on thoughts in relation to the importance of strategic action planning and the provision of feedback in, re in regard to goal attainment. 